Hello everybody. So today I'm bringing you a video on how to reball your memory chips using solder paste. The paste that we're going to be using today it's going to be this one here by Mechanic. Um, this is stuff that I've been using for years and I trust this. This one here is a 183 Celsius so it's leaded solder paste. So that's the melting point. That's the melting point there, 183 Celsius. Okay, you could buy this other stuff, but you don't want to use this for rework like um, reballing because it does have a lower melting point. This will melt at 138 Celsius. So, for example, if you have memory chips around your card with this type of um, paste and you need to redo a reball on one of the chips, um, it is very likely that the other ones may shift or you're gonna be you know, uh, melting the other solder on the other chips as well. So not that uh, this doesn't apply to this, it also applies to this if you're doing a rework on 183. Um, however, you know what, just stick to using this for, for your reballing. Um, this stuff right here has its applications, but uh, it's, in my opinion, is definitely not for rework. So, yeah, this is the stuff that we're going to be using today. Um, today we got, uh, no, this one here, you can't really see it, but uh, not that it really matters. It's Micron um, uh, D9 WCW chips, and these are very common chips. Uh, used in a lot of graphics cards. These are GDDR6 memory chips. So I need, these are very high demand, so I need these to be reballed. Um, I don't use the other stencil, like the 90 by 90. I don't use that. I use direct heating. Um, and I have these stencils here that I bought off of AliExpress. But there is a particular store, and I'll show you guys which one it is. Uh, where you can get the best stencils. They sell, they do sell these right here. Let's see. Um, uh, they do sell in other different stores. They sell these here. Okay. Um, and these are also okay to work with, but you will immediately be able to tell the difference here. Okay. Um, that. The one on the right has more surface area. If you look on the, you know, around the, the holes there, more surface area than the one on the left. This, these, these are okay, but you have to take, it will take you some time to master these. Um, they're finicky. Uh, the, the, the way the holes are made, I don't know what happened there during manufacturing, but um, they, they tend to make the balls stick to the stencil more than these here. These have a more, um, uh, they don't have a rounded edge on the holes, if that makes any sense. These are pretty, uh, um, th th they're better. They're better for doing reball with direct heating. Um, if you find these right here, um, stay away from these. I, I use them as kind of like backup, but they're really not my favorite. So yeah, I keep those there. All right, so well, um, you know, to do reballing, you will need some alcohol. This will come handy. I have a microfiber cloth and a toothbrush because you do want to clean your, your chips right after you are done reballing uh, to get rid of any impurities. And you want to do it with alcohol in combination with your alcohol. So just showing you some tools that you will need. Also, um, you will need these are essential. Uh, if you have a pair of um, pliers like like this one here, um, to be able to do to to do your rework, this and you you'll see right now here in a minute how this works. So okay, I want to put you guys on a tripod and get to do some getting, or uh, we'll be doing some reballing uh, using direct heating um, stencils, not uh, using the balls this stuff right here. Um, I find this stuff to be like very finicky, like um, some would argue this is quicker, 
Okay. And yes, I, in a lot of cases, most cases, yes, it is. Uh, but there's some times where the balls just don't want to, um, they don't want to stick or they just, you know, move around or, uh, there's a ball that is missing and is a pain in the butt or maybe two or three that are missing and there's a pain in the butt in the, in the butt to get him back on the pad so I'd rather just use this stuff here because it's more um, uh, more effective it takes a little bit longer but it's more effective in my opinion that's just what I think um, I do my um, on my uh, soldering station I have it set to 360 degrees and the air that we're gonna be using temperature wise uh, we're going to drop this to 350. That's what we want it. And uh, as you can see, I have it set to 5 uh, out of 8 options, you know, as far as speed. Um, you don't want this to be too, too high temperature and the, the speed doesn't need to be so high. Okay, I'll put you guys on a tripod now. All right, so um, remember that if you're going to be doing this stuff with um, with these stencils right here, you want to make sure that they are clean. So you know you want to make sure that the little holes there are not clogged up. And as you can tell, it there these are pretty clean as far as I can tell. All right, so um, and uh, I've discussed this in my previous video um, where to get these on AliExpress. Uh, this is my favorite choice for direct heating. Uh, yeah, so I, I like these right here, these little tools. Okay, so first thing you need to do is, uh, you see this line right here on the other side? Okay, you wanna match this up. This has memory chips. Uh, these memory chips typically have a little ridge. I don't know if you can tell there right in the middle. This little ridge right here, you wanna line that up with that gap. Okay, with that line right there so you get something like okay you want to go like this there and your ball should look something or your stencil should look something like this lined up with the uh, pads I don't know if you can tell there um, but this should be pretty lined up and I'll show you guys under the microscope what that looks like once I start doing the uh, the actual reball so We'll put this there and I'll get the microscope here. I want to be able to see what's going on. Okay, and that looks uh, a little bit off. The balls are not quite lined up, so we need to line them up. Let me see here. Yeah. Okay, so sorry guys. Uh, but this is kind of finicky. This is why I don't make these videos uh, or I haven't made a video about this uh, in the past because it is a it is kind of like a finicky process and there's a lot of um, um, instances where you find me be quiet being like you know silent that's because I have to <laughs> focus on what I'm doing here um, and even though I've done this thousands of times it's still each and every time it's uh, you have to pay attention to what the heck you're doing otherwise you will you know, mess things up so yeah that is that okay so all right so now we got it lined up and um, this part here you be watching on the microscope because there's no point for me to be um, sorry I keep bumping into it uh, for me to be uh, recording off the camera and yeah Anyway, so uh, we're going to be using our paste now. You want to grab something like this. So about this much is enough for, for one chip. Let's see, it's this. So this right here is about where you want it. You know how much you want to use per chip. Um, you're going to have some leftover, but you can save some of this. For the next chip so this is just to show you guys what this looks like okay all right so mind you the whole time I'm looking through the microscope to make sure that um, I'm applying this correctly here and the way you want to do it is just 
um, spread it. Uh, you don't have to add too much pressure. You just what you're doing right now is just letting the blade glide over the over the stencil. You don't want to add too much pressure because then you're gonna shove too much paste in this in these little holes. And what happens is that once you pack too much paste inside of these little holes, um, the paste starts to run off under the stencil onto other areas where you don't want uh, solder paste, like in the middle of the chip or just, just yeah, you, you don't want to apply too much pressure. Just the right amount of pressure is, um, um, how would I say this? Just, just let the blade glide. I mean, you use use some common sense here. You don't want to put too much pressure. It's just this is light, nothing special. Just like that. Okay. You just got to make sure that all the holes are covered. You could do this with a spatula, with that pla plastic spatula that you use for um, uh, for your um, for when you are applying thermal paste but um, they're not uh, like a blade like this metal blade is it's more uh, consistent like as far as flatness um, that's why I don't like using spatulas I like this to be able to like glide across the chip like this and be able to pick up all the paste that I, that is not necessary so and it usually doesn't take this long I'm just doing it just to kind of um, show you guys what the process looks like um, and then you just want to go like this sorry I keep bumping into the microscope microscope there just like that just wipe it as much as you can with the spatula wipe the uh, the excess this is why I like to use the uh, metal ones or something like a metal thing like this here okay so the chip now looks like this under the microscope and then you come with a q-tip just a q-tip and you just wipe it like this to get any any excesses you can you can tell there like in the corners um like right here in the middle you know, there's excess thermal thermal paste or not thermal paste but uh, solder paste you want to get some of that because uh you want to pick that stuff up because because when you apply heat that's going to be melting there and it'll just look nasty you don't want that so just quickly wipe over the surface here don't apply pressure just let it glide over and the q-tip will pick up you know excess as you can see there okay so when you're finished this is what it should look like under the microscope all right okay so now we're going to come with heat and i'm going to show you guys the trick on how to get this right the first time i know there's a lot of people that hate this process um, because the balls don't stick but there's a there's a trick to it um, and the trick is simple you have to be quick all right so as you can see now on the camera I'm a little far away I'm about uh, I'll say 10 maybe 10 centimeters from the stencil and I'm just slowly slowly warming it up Okay, and then I'll come closer and closer. You can see now on the microscope that the uh, the solder paste is now starting to uh, the the flux in the solder paste is starting now to flow. That's what we want. That's why we start slowly from a distance, and then the balls will slowly start to appear for you. And there may be one or two, perhaps that at times that don't show, like they don't come up. I'll show you how to fix that. It's actually quite simple. And then you just slowly get closer. You don't want to get too close, but you do eventually want to get near to the uh, to the stencil or closer to the stencil. Like just give it a quick pass like this. Okay, this is ready. The key thing here is to be quick. Don't let this sit for too long. Because if you do, the balls will stick. And then you're gonna have a failed reball. 
Okay, so uh, sorry, that's not in focus there under a microscope, but um, as you can see, all the balls are there. See, that was successful, uh, but we're not done yet. We're not done yet. Um, this is something that you will need to do each time after you do a reball like this, even though all the balls are successful, you need to uh, run heat on the chip a second time. Let me get this impurities out of there. Um, you will need to uh, rerun or pass some heat over the chip again with some flux. And I'll show you what I mean by that. Let's get this over here. All right, right there. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and um, yeah, where's my flux? Give me a second, guys. Okay, here it is. Okay, so uh, what I mean by that is that the balls, um, I'll say about 50% of the times are not quite lined up perfectly over the pads, which is okay. This could still work. This could still work. Um, because once you put it on the on the board with the um, with the flux, oops, with the uh, flux um, over the board, and you try to solder it back to um, to the board, uh, the balls will will realign themselves. But you don't want that realigning to occur when the chip is actually on the board. You want this realigning to occur off the board. So you you will add a little bit of flux, just like a drop like this. Okay and I drop on the other side, and I'll show you what I mean right now. You see the balls start to move, start to realign themselves. They move a little bit. See that? So this is, this is actually um, where the balls should be. So you have to do this each and every time you do uh, direct heat reballing. It's recommended, I recommend it. And, uh, well, that's, that's, that's it. I mean, it's, it's, not, it's not rocket science. Um, there you have beautiful balls. Let me go ahead and clean this real quick. And I'll show you what it looks like. Once it's cleaned. Okay, let's get the microscope out of the way here. All right, so the way I do this is um, I grab my chip like this. I just put it on the cloth. Spray it with um, isopropyl or isopropanol. It's the same thing. Spray it with alcohol and then just go like this. Now you want to do this with every chip. Every memory chip. And so yeah, that's that's the secret. The secret is timing. As soon as you get the heat off of this thing, you need to quickly separate the two. Otherwise, you will you 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 will struggle. The chip will most likely uh, stick to the stencil, and you will destroy the the balls. So there you go, guys. Quick and easy reballing. Doesn't take much time, and you get it right the first time. All the balls are there. You don't have to tinker with balls moving on you or missing or anything like that. Uh, this is how I do my reballings for GPUs as well as memory chips. So yeah, direct heat for me is the way to go. All right, this is all I had for now, guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. If you haven't subscribed yet, I would appreciate a subscription. It doesn't cost you anything. Uh, hit me with a like and a comment in the comment section. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.